anvil. That's what's important. Of course, the anvil's always in the shot. We're live streaming now, <laughs> man, by the way. All right, folks, welcome. Uh, if you're just tuning in, this is our Monday at noon o'clock this week in photo critique for the TWIP Pro TWIP community. And this week's topic was black and white. Black and white. So we'll, we'll see, as, as Mr. Troy Miller uh, suggested. Uh, speaking of Troy Miller, Troy is on the hot seat again <laughs> as the, the, the co-critiquer at large. What's going on down there, man? What are you doing? It's hot. It's just Southern California hot. Like, I really liked all the rain and the cold. Um, <laughs> and I know it's hotter elsewhere, right? But, mm -hmm. like, like 90 degrees and 50% humidity is not comfortable in Southern California. It's just not what we're used to. So, yeah, try Central Valley. We were triple digits yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it's yeah, no joke. No, no joke at all. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, sure, there are hotter places on the planet, but... This one is mine. It's all relative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are many like it, but this one is I, mine. Yeah. Admittedly, I, I am I have a very narrow uh, temperature range tolerance and yeah. um, this is exceeding it. So <laughs> Hey, this folks, this is how hot it is. The cat cam is vacant because the cats <laughs> the cats don't want to be they don't want to be in the window they're they're hiding because they're smart mammals and they're under the bed somewhere <laughs> yeah. hanging out so yeah. yeah it's crazy uh but good good submissions this week for this week's critique and i hope yeah. you've already thought up i think you you picked the critique topic for next week already right i think we were going to do did. yeah at the mixer right we were going to do uh virtual or not virtual but but um AI, AI generated. Yep. 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 We're going to we're going to force the people in the community. This will be interesting because it's like going out and taking a photo. Not not to say it's easy, but it is a known quantity. And everyone in our group at least knows how to do that. Not everyone understands the intricacies of going into discord and generating an image using a prompt. So I think what I'll do is I'll I'll just to, just to kind of you know, ease the process, I'll, I'll record a demo or a tutorial oh, cool. and post that in the community just to walk people through how to get everything set up. So there'll be no excuses. Yeah. You can always refer back to the video if you get lost. And it's not, it's not hard. It's not hard. I mean, Troy Miller was making, what were you making in there? Like some, some demonic clowns or something? <laughs> like, something horrifying you're but where did that come from was that like live those clowns live in your mind or something like tim, what, what is that tim ingle like tim has a clown fascination and and he started to discord and we were just like one i wonder if we can make scary clowns um so but you know uh for those of you that are like you know rolling your eyes and thinking like oh god this has nothing to do with photography um it actually does and and this is this is where i'm coming from if you can pre-visualize and put an image into prompts and have help you know ai to generate that for you it's really no different than you going and standing in front of a landscape and thinking okay i want the sun to come in from the left i would love some nice clouds maybe i should come back here in august you know and pre-visualize your shot before you take it so it's an exercise in pre-visualization so, yeah, I'm going yeah. with that. It is. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, it's a brand new quote unquote. I hope we can take the quotes away, but it's a brand <laughs> new quote, quote art form that that I think I think it's important. I, as I've said in, in many talks and in panel discussions on this stuff, I don't I don't think it is a prerequisite for photographers to embrace and in love or, or fall in love with this AI prompt to text image generation stuff. I do think you have to understand it and you have to at least, you know, understand if you think it's coming for you, you know, you got to understand what's coming for you. So it, it's not going away no matter how bad you talk about it. You know, it's not going to just vanish because you poo pooed it. It's going to get stronger and stronger. So, yeah. So it's better to embrace it from at least an educational standpoint right now, dive in and you know, if you if you find it enjoyable, push it forward and start making cool stuff, right? Yeah. 
yeah it's fun it's actually it's actually really fun i i will generate ai art like on mid journey daily um yeah. i'll come in I'll, I'll have my tea i'll check my email and i'll sit down and i'll be thinking man a sunset over you know a buffalo covered field with snow and a and a fire truck what, what yeah. would that look like yeah and sometimes it, it's really inspirational and other times it's just it's totally garbage. ludicrous and, <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> And you're it's like, like you're like okay come on good image give me good image you roll the <laughs> prompt slot machine it comes up it's getting better though it's getting better there's some there's been some interesting releases and some new tools released on it on the mid journey side that uh that have increased the photorealism of a lot of the photos in fact um yeah. a friend of mine Pratik Naik whose interview I will be releasing this week on the Twit podcast did an interview with him. He's an ace retoucher, uh, commercial photographer retoucher. You know, you know that ilk of superhuman that understands sub pixel retouching and making skin look amazing. You know, he's that guy, and he's leaning into AI full bore. And he just last week yeah. he released a course on AI image generation and all that. I think I would argue one of the I've seen a lot of courses out there, but most of them are probably not amazing. I won't I won't go any further than that. His will be amazing because just from the conversation I had with Pratik, I learned a ton of stuff there on how to make my my <laughs> my things better. So I'll link to that in the in the description for this episode. And of course, just keep an eye on the Twip podcast feed for the or the Twip website, thisweekinphoto.com for the uh, for the interview I did with him and I'll post a link to his course there as well. Or just go check them out at solsticeretouch.com, Pratik Nike. All right, man, enough of that chit chat. Let's dive in. We got we don't have a ton of images, so let's we can we can no. kind of meander through these and chit chat about them. I'm gonna go ahead and share this here screen. Here yeah. we go. All right. This is a photo critique number 218, black and white. Let's go to our first image. And that is from nope. William Bannock. We haven't seen William in the community in quite a there's, while. There's one above that. Is there? Uh oh. Yeah. Let's go back. Yeah. I mean, not just because it's mine, but you got to get the. It's in the oh. comment. You got to click show more comments. Oh. You okay. know how that thing gets buried. Yeah. Oh, this one. Yep. Show more. Okay. Yeah. Wait, where is it? No, how come? Why is it not showing? I see oh, no it's... image, Troy Miller. Is it showing on your side? It, yeah, it's right there. Where it re see more. Oh, that. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> we'll teach circle. you how to use your platform. <laughs> circle, circle. You're trying to convince me to move to Discord, aren't you? <laughs> uh, ow. Ow. Hey, I can say that. Hey, I'm a customer. I've been paying faithfully my subscription fee for years. So we're going to get with it. Discord is looking good. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Oh my god! All right, oh I know god. the I know the story of this photo, so share it. This is this is kind of magical. So tell us the deal. It, it's just a it's it's one of my first images that I ever took when I was in a local RCC, you know, a Riverside Community College, a local community college, and it was really the first time that I had a vision and I was able to photograph it. And it is by no means an amazing photo. I just it's very memorable. And when, when we talked about like black and white, this was the first image um, that came up. And I have over the years, I've done photo shoots here uh, with mm. clients and things, which has been kind of cool. But yeah, yeah. So this was just one of those images that always sticks with me. And it leans into that idea that not all images have to be perfect to yeah. have meaning, right? And so that's kind of one of the reasons I want to throw that in there, considering we're critiquing everybody else's work, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. This is fun. This is fun. So if you were to critique this, if you were like current, current Troy Miller were to critique, you know, old school Troy Miller from the 1800s, what would you, uh, how, what would you say about this? Image? <laughs> uh, well, I would say, you know, it's a, it's a nice shot. It's a nice perspective. I like the fact that there's a lot of depth here. Um, I wish that there wasn't as much of the palm tree on the right. I think that it's too dominant. I think that it should be more of a hint. You know, I don't like the hole along the bottom that's cut off. And we definitely need to work with the tonality to draw us through the image a little bit more where the tree on the right is 
very dominant, very bright. And I think that the story is through the center of the image. So I agree. some dodging yeah. and burning. That's what I would have said too. Very cool. Very yeah. nice. Uh, very nice. Very nice. All right, moving right along. Thanks for putting that in there. So William's yeah. shot is this one. Also a really cool shot. I like this one. Very, very graphic, artistic. You can read into this a lot, right? Like I, I, oh, it's, yeah. it, especially depending on who you are and you read into it. I read into it as like, oh, it's Alabama. You know, I've never been to Alabama. So all I know is what I've read and heard about Alabama. But Alabama, so we know that obviously our eye goes to that first. And then that one way. And the traffic light gives to me, if I'm looking at this artistically, says, you know, this is a very rule oriented area with, you know, it's one way and it's Alabama, all these vertical and diagonal lines. It's kind of kind of strict, feels like a strict sort of area. And you could read into that whatever you want and make whatever narrative you want around that. But it, it's kind of it kind of leaves it up for interpretation beyond the beyond just the okay this is alabama and there are restrictions in place in alabama either now or in the past what, what, what do you think i i really do appreciate this image a lot I, I really love the the fact that you know we're cut off just above street view so it's really about the buildings in the sky kind of showing the mass and the distance and the space and the depth i love that a lot um that there there's no people you know, that this is really just about the city. And I and I and I dig that so much. Um, the composition is great. The one way sign is really sort of like the hero. And then the Alabama, the vertical Alabama sign in there, maybe it's like a theater or something is kind of our second hook kind of draws us in. I, I wish that like in in processing, you could take that blue sky and bring it down, make it darker, just the just the blue of the blue sky and add some more contrast you know, to our overall image. If if you were shooting film, you would shoot this with a yellow or an orange filter to get that sky a little bit darker. Um, but other than that, I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's a fun shot. And uh, you know, I was looking at the shot, and I, and I was thinking, I was thinking, um, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more around the edges, like at the bottom the street. I kind of feel like, and I know it's it's been cropped off intentionally, but just me, I want to see what what does that street look like, you know? Because that would give me a sense of time and place, because you could see the cars and the people there and all that. And I was saying, yeah, you could you could probably extend that <laughs> with, with with the new Photoshop. You could probably just make, and what would it do with a complex scene like this <laughs> if you if you wanted to grow the bottom of this or extend the bottom and maybe the right side or even all around, you know, just extend the right. The, four sides what would it add in there that'd be a good experiment so right oh yeah no no kidding yeah that would mm -hmm. be fun to see what it would do but yeah mm -hmm. well well visioned well shot yep love it yeah very fun very fun cool very cool who's who was this oh william bannock thank you william for that all right up next is karen sweeney sunshine after the rain shot with a d500 and sigma 105 macro and she put the color in here for us to check out too so yeah let's look at this one i don't know yeah i'm curious what you think i see she, she put the color one in there right so now i'm looking at when i think daisies of course i think color but do you need it in here right we always say drop the color out if it's not in service of the the overall image do you feel like dropping the color out of this shot adds to it, removes from it, or or neither here nor there? Well, it depends on the intention. I mean, yeah. if, if you want to see, you know, the the yellow of the flower and the white of the petals, and if that's important to you, fine. But if you want to see the shape and the form, that that's what monochromatic does. Is it is it draws you into the shape and the form and the layering. Our brains are not distracted by by color. You know, cover it, color is overpowering to our eyes, and so it it definitely takes away. Um, I think that one of the things we need to consider. Well, first of all, I, I do love the image, and I and I love the layering that's happening in here in the shallow depth of field, the water petals or the 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 rain, the little droplets of water. But when you convert an image to black and white think about the colors in the image and how they can create separation for you. So instead of just desaturating an image like this, it makes it a little bit flatter. Look at your greens, look at your, your cool tones, look at your yellows, 
and decide which direction you want them to go. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I might have taken the yellow a little bit darker and I might have taken the green way darker and brought up the highlights and then you get more separation. So it's, you can't just desaturate it. And I know Karen knows that, but um, just something to think about when you're doing your conversions. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, you know, I was leading the witness a little bit, but I, I actually like the, I like it in black and white like this. I, I do. I feel like there's, like you said, it depends on the intent of the, the shot, right? So dep and depending on how much resolution is in this shot, I feel like this is a right. great, this is a good crop, but maybe even punch even, even farther. Cause looking at the detail in here, yeah, I want to see these, you know, the detail up close on the flower. We all know what daisies look like, right? So, sure, an overall shot showing daisies in their full the grandeur is great. But what about cropping in a little bit more abstract so that, you know, at a hint, you could just see a, how, much, how little of this plant could you see and still recognize that it was a daisy, right? Is it just like a corner, a corner of it, maybe with, with the... Uh, the the center of it at the lower right of the frame and the rest of the petals coming up into it again depending on how much resolution that you have available to you but i would i would definitely play around with it in color and in black and white so yeah i like right. it right what about the vignette yeah. she's got on here she's got it's 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 i like this kind of vignette where it's you can tell it's a vignette you can tell it's been vignetted as a photographer i know it's been vignetted a regular consumer may not even you know, sort of register. It just looks, my eye is just naturally focused now on the center of the image. But that adding that vignette, I'm curious what you think about that. And then also the key line border that's added around the edge. Is that, is that adding to it? You feel should it have been different, thicker, not there at all? What do you think? No, I think it's, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderfully well done. I think the vignette is a tad heavy. And I say that um, because I can see it. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't use a heavy vignette if you want more drama in the scene. But I, I can see this concentric, even vignette happening all the way around. And I don't think in nature it's going to be as even. So if you're going to go with a heavy vignette, break it up so it's not obvious. And one way to see that is to zoom out of your image, make your image really small and look at it like, like what we see here. It's like, oh, I can see that vignette. If it was big, you might not see it unless you're like across the street. So. And, yeah. the, and the key line presentation, I think, is wonderful. I think it's perfect. So, okay. yeah, okay. I, I, I like it. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Thank you, Karen Sweeney. Appreciate you. All right. And here's that color one just for reference. See, it's a whole, it's a completely different idea now, right? It's completely, you know, the warmth is coming through. Yeah. You can almost smell it at this point. On this one, I agree with you. I feel like the vignette is a tad on the heavy side. I didn't feel like that on the black and white. On um, this one, yeah, because I can see it's evident that there's there's a vignette there, which isn't in and of itself a negative, I don't think. I mean, dep again, depending on the the final purpose of this shot, but if from a from an artistic standpoint, if the artist really wanted a heavy vignette on that for reasons, there's nothing that says that you can't do that. But from sure. a let's not draw attention to the edges of the frame standpoint, it should have been maybe it's a tad tad bit lighter. No. Right. Right. Yeah. And something that would be an interesting study for everybody to do. And I was trying to find a link to an article, but I can't find it is, is look up like how our brains, how our eyes and our brain sees color and black and white and the number of rods and cones and how sensitive they are and how much more sensitive we are to, to grays and, and tonal values that really plays into how we as humans perceive images. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's incredibly interesting and it may not matter for most of our work, but sometimes it does matter. And that's why sometimes I think a black and white image is actually better than the color image for a story that you want to tell because of the way that we process that data. Yeah. So it's, a, it's worth a deep dive. I, I had some links, but I can't find them while I'm streaming. So <laughs> well, just throw them in the community later in the, in the chat yeah. for this or the, the comments. Very cool. I like this. Awesome. All right, moving right along. 
It's Deborah Cole is up next. Deborah says, street photography is such a broad genre that I interpret to be that I interpret to be whatever I observe in the moment out and about. Sometimes I'm actually on the street and sometimes I'm just in transit from one street to another, always looking for a moment. Yeah, that's what it's all about, right? Yep. That's awesome. Look at that guy. He's yeah. like, man, I spent my last on that bag for her. <laughs> <laughs> I really shouldn't have bought this. We should have just gone to Target. <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> that's so great. That's a that's cool so shot. Great. Yeah, like so. So take this apart for us. Like, what what do you think? Like from a from a street photography standpoint, I know you've done a fair amount of that as well. I mean, it's not your genre per se, but you've done it. Like, what what do you think? I I think this is amazing. I, I mean, I gotta say, of all the images that were submitted, this one just really stuck with me a lot and i think as a as a wedding photographer and a people photographer which is a very much of a candid type life situation mm -hmm. um what i'm really drawn into is the emotions in their faces and i know that they seem pretty bland but yet the the emotion is also in their body language you know their hands on each other's knees um how she's snuggling into his neck and he's not pulling away or you know his head is tilted into her a little bit i mean if somebody posed this, I would be like, dang, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, th these are the kind of poses, these are the kind of shots that I look for and I try to get in my own, you know, work and in my wedding work and my couples and stuff. It's so hard to get that natural, intimate closeness without making it look, you know, completely fake. Yeah. Overall image. Right. Staged. Um, the overall image, like, like if we we're going to talk about like, oh, I'm going to print this to hang in a gallery or something. I would do some dodging and burning in this image. Uh, I wouldn't crop anything because I love the crop, but like their knees are brighter than their face. I, I just bring the knees down. Um, the lurking face in the background. I love mm -hmm. the lurking face. I love you do? That. Oh, interesting. I was, I was, I, love it. I would have said take, take her out of there because I feel like I'm drawn away. Like the lurking face in the background. This we're talking about this, this person back here, and also right. this, this guy outside right here. I feel like I would have removed them because they, they're taking me away from our heroes in the shot, and they, they really should just be background. In fact, I feel like I want our main subjects to be on this train alone. Right? It's just they're just. Or a, yeah, it's a train. That is a train, right? Yeah, I want to be on that train yeah. by themselves. Well, so the, the the reason that I want the faces in the background to be taken down, and the and the fact that I want them to stay there is, I think that it's poignant to the fact that these two don't. They are alone. Mm -hmm. I think that the story here is they are alone. It doesn't matter how many people are around them. Like it, that 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 to me, that's a more powerful story. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm totally okay with that. I just. Yeah from a tonal value and a depth of value and where my eye keeps landing, I don't want to, I don't want to keep looking at the person in the back. I don't want that to be my subject. I want to look at the people in the front. Yeah. So right. I, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So the, then the other thing I was thinking was would this, and I like the crop of this, right? Cause they're, they're slightly off center over here on the left side. Um, not, not, skewed or, or cheated all the way to the left, but they're just a little bit off center to give them some place to look into. And the, and the movement of the train is moving from left to right as well. So it kind of, that plays into the overall composition really well. Um, so, but two things, I wonder, and I, don't, I can't tell if there's a vignette on this, but I feel like I want to be drawn more into these folks. And I think you could have accomplished that with a little bit of a vignette to pull us in mm -hmm. and maybe you know, pop pop them in the middle just a little bit. Not you don't want to put a spotlight on them, but just a little bit so they stand out a little. And then the other thing, I was looking at the shot and I was thinking, um, there's there's shots within a shot here, right? So there's there's a tight portrait shot here. If you crop in just on them, and then you're then you're really focusing in on the expressions of our two subjects. Then if you want to go abstract, there's another shot down here of the hands and the bags on the lap that without any faces in it at all, that tells it a whole different story that would be, be really interesting. And then the last thing I was going to throw at you, Troy. So like I said, maybe I would take this person out of there and maybe this person in the background, I'd remove them. Uh, somehow and simplify the image. This is a street photograph, which is a cousin to photojournalism, 
we wouldn't want to do that in these kind of shots, right? You know, or would you? Like, where do you stand on that? Manipulating a shot like this to make it more successful or more, uh, you know, or to remove distracting elements to, to sell it more? Or does that break the veil of street photography if you go in there and manipulate? I don't know. What do you think? Um, <clears throat> it, it, it depends on how you're going to advertise your work, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to say that you're, you know, a photojournalistic street photographer, and you're going to sell your work and you go in and remove those things, well, then you're lying to people. And I don't think that's cool. If you're just an artist selling, you know, street photography, do whatever you want, edit that yeah. image, however you want. I don't think that that's a, a breaking of the trust because it's, it's art, you know, like the guy in the super far back, I would probably take him out because I feel this it's a weird spot for his head in between their heads. Right. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. probably take that out. Yeah, but I wouldn't do that and then tell somebody, oh, look at this wonderful capture of mine. Like I would say, look at my image, look at my piece of art, you know, and if they asked me, what did I do? I'd be like, I took this weird guy's floating head out of the back, you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm all for it. I lean into that stuff. Yeah, I like it. Do it. So then to push that even further, would you be OK with, let's say, if the the artist went in use and brought this image into photoshop and said okay in this window right here outside of the train i want some sort of graffiti on the wall that tells a story maybe it's a it's a piece of graffiti that matches the logo on the bag so we can get the feeling that they saw that or or something like that is that is that taking it too far? If you go in, you start using artificial intelligence to augment the content of the image, let alone growing it, you know, the, the, the boundaries of it. If you start adding elements in into the scene that weren't there before. I mean, we could have all, of course, we could have done that in Photoshop all along, right? Sure. It's not it's not hard. You could take that logo off the bag and put it on the wall back there. Um, yeah. But what do, what do you think about that? Still, same same answer. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do it. It's art. Do it. Do I it. mean, you, you look you look back over time at classic movies, some of the some of the most classic movies of all time. Right. They're all fake. They're all fiction for the most part. Right. Like they put light in places. They they change the color of the outfits to shoot in black and white. They choreograph the lighting on the streets and this like it's all fiction. It's a story that they're telling. I'm all about being genuine with your audience, though, is if it's a if it's fiction, you know, say it's fiction. If it's photojournalistic and it's nonfiction, say it's nonfiction and be true to that. Just be true to the category that you that you share your work in. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I saw. Let me put us back on screen. I saw this thing. I think I'll bring this up if I can find it again. I should be able to find it. Uh, but I saw this thing where this photographer it was a, it was an article that was, again, talking about AI versus professional photography and all that. And this photographer had gone in and demonstrated that within about two or three hours, he could create a whole body of work, photographic body of work and build an entire website, link it up for credit card processing, link it up for booking and appointments in the whole nine yard in the span of, you know, a couple of hours and get that knocked out and start taking clients without ever having even picked up a camera. Right. So oh, we're, yeah. we're, we're there now, right. You could, you could absolutely do that. And, and if you want to be disingenuous about it, you could pass it off as your own. My question to you oh, yeah. is in that world, you know, it's going to happen. It's probably happened a bazillion times already, but is, if you're a beginning photographer and you're all beginning photographers always faced with the question, you know, that, that, you know, chicken and the egg question of, I want to start shooting this kind of thing, but I don't have enough in my portfolio to convince people to either sit for me or let alone charge. Maybe I'll just generate a bunch of stuff and then I'll, you know, let AI help me fake it until I can actually start shooting that way. I feel like that's a hundred percent disingenuous for the, for the record. But how do you feel about that? You know, it's, it's going to happen and is happening right now, right? I, I hate it so much, um, you know, and, and I'm going to sound a little curmudgeon with this, but, you know, photography used to be a thing where, you know, you had to mentor with somebody in order to create work. You had to be behind your camera and you had to be on a job site or something and create work. And I think AI is going to devalue a lot of that. So that that to me is frustrating. The other thing is, is this is not new, by the way. This is not new at all. And I, I'm sorry if this offends anybody, but there's a lot of new photographers that that come into the 
to the market, let's say, and they don't have clients. So what they do is they do stylized shoots where they hire models and they set up scenes and they photograph it and they go like, oh, look, I'm a wedding photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, because yeah. you had unlimited time. You controlled the light. You had your models sit the way you want. That doesn't make you a wedding photographer. But yeah. that's been happening for a long time already. So yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm literally on the I'm on the sidelines with my popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, I think it's it's like anything. It has to work itself out. Mm -hmm. It's like anything that that we as a photography community have to talk about it and find the balance so that we can help <clears throat> identify, you know sort of artificially categorized work like we just we need that we need to have yeah. those conversations a lot yeah yeah and increasingly so into the future yep yeah yeah it's crazy yeah lots to talk about there but love this shot this is cool photojournalism yeah or, or street photography and and she she nailed it on the head when she said um where is it yeah uh that she interprets whatever I observe in the moment when she's out and about. That's what it's all about right there, right? Sort of right. documenting your life's journey. If, if that's what you want to document, just kind of this is, this is what I see when I meander in, around the world. And these are the things that, that make me look twice that I find interesting. And you take a photo of that, whether it be mundane to someone else or whatever, you know, it's important to you and you right. can capture it and share it and tell that story. Or you, know, you, could, you could choose to tell... In photojournalism or street photography, you could choose to tell a more pointed story. Like, okay, yep. I want to, you know, I want to go in. A, I would not recommend this, but I want to go into San Francisco and document the situation going on, going yeah. on in San Francisco. You know, from a street perspective, I would. If you choose to do that, bring a really cheap camera that you're okay not leaving with. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's yeah. the problem. But yeah. And cool uh, big kudos to Deborah, all the other street photographers, Paolo. Um, you know, the idea of being able to go out and create amazing images when you cannot manipulate the scene, you cannot manipulate your subject, and you can't change the lighting, uh, that, is, that is so infinitely difficult. And I know several photographers that are local here, they think that street photography is easy. You know, they get a long lens and, they, you know, they just stalk people like it's it's not easy to be good at this kind of stuff um yeah. you know so so kudos to those that are doing it and doing it well it's yeah. it's a it's a skill it's a talent for sure and you never know you never like that's the thing when when you have somebody that that kind of has put in the time to understand an art form like valerie jardin right she's a street photographer uh and she makes it look easy like you go, I went out right. with her in Paris, you know, with a group and uh, one of her workshops and she was, she's just like, oh yeah, there's shot click. And then later we look at it and it's like, oh, what the, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was right there. I was right there. I did not see that. Yeah. Right. And she's wearing around there, little Fuji with a fixed lens doing, doing amazing things. <clears throat> but that's the thing, you know, when, when people know what they're doing and it, it, it tends to look effortless when they're shooting stuff like like sharky james right he came in um uh, to one of our mixers and he was saying you know one of the reasons that he wanted you know not to toot the horn but one of the reasons he wanted to get into podcasting was he was listening to me and he saw that i made it look easy <laughs> it's so easy it's so easy i mean jesus if frederick could do it of course i could do it sure yeah it is easy <laughs> everything's easy with enough time or effort right but no, uh yeah but if you love it yeah dive in yeah these are i love photojournalism i it's I got a special place in my heart for the art form and for the people that know how to do it well and put themselves in situations whether you know sticky situations that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to get into and they put themselves in there to get the story to show us what what's going on and by by act of doing all that maybe changing the world or just shots like this, like the like Deborah shot here, you know, just showing us uh, a little glimpse into her, a day in the life of Deborah Cole, you know, which is also just as valid. So very cool. Very cool. All right, thank you, Deborah Cole. All right, moving right along. Irvin B. Penn is up next. He calls this one a different path. No, I think you missed one. 
Did I? Under What's Palo. That? Yeah. What is wrong it's with me today? The... Yeah. Is under it... Palo. Go down. Okay. No, go down. Going too far. Down. There's Palo, and then there's yeah. Seymour. Okay. Seymour. Okay. See, you guys are hiding your shots in the comments. You got to put it at the top <laughs> level. I'm not that bright, right? You got to. <laughs> you got to put it at the top level, or we're gonna miss it. Yeah, Can't make your a submission a comment of another photo submission. It's got to be at its own. Because <laughs> Troy's not always going to be here to save me. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Paolo says, uh, okay, what does he say? This is true. So you guys can read this. I'm not going to read the whole thing on this one. Paolo, I know you're in the chat. So chime in in the chat if you, want, if you have any comments on what we're saying. I'll bring it up on screen. But look at the shot. Yeah, this is this, this is really wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. there there's really nothing about this that I don't love. Um, I know that that, you know, getting a genuine smile out of somebody is very difficult. Um, it's hard to do it when that's what they want you to do. And it's even harder when it's just a uh, photojournalistic. I mean, even if you know somebody, uh, it's still a lot of people feel uncomfortable with a camera in your face. And, you know, this is not a long lens. So, you know, Paolo is fairly close to this gentleman. Um, I love the presentation, the composition. Uh, I would prefer that his hoodie or the hood it would not be so bright. It's just, mm. it's one of those things. It's very distracting. It's the brightest thing in the, in the scene. It's not even as bright as the sky in the top left corner. A and I would just try to take that down as much as I can. So it doesn't detract from his face, but other than that, it's, it's a great image. Yep. Yep. I agree. I, I totally agree. The only other thing, and I don't know, I'm on the I'm on the fence about this. Is this tree back here, right? It, it's not it's not egregious, right? It's not bothering me a ton. But I feel like it would have been a little bit cleaner if if that wasn't there. And that's easy to to zap out of there real quick, right. and just to keep that whole background kind of one even tone. And right now, this this dark splotch right here behind him is is drawing me. Just a little bit of magnetism is pulling me out. And Troy's absolutely right. The white, the the contrast or the white or lighter values of this scarf here or hoodie here are drawing us away from the face. I want to I want to be brought into his weathered face, right? And the fact that his face and the weather, you know, just kind of the. Yeah, I've been out here for a long time and it's not fun kind of reflecting what this landscape looks like. I can feel this landscape in his face. Right. So I want right. to be pulled pulled more into that. So maybe maybe punch in just a little bit to, so I can get more look at his eyes and maybe a little bit of eye work on here just to pop his eyes out of there just a little bit so that I'm drawn right into there. So I think that coupled with dropping the values of these lighter areas here, nuking this tree back here would bring us right into this face. And it's just like, you know, I, when I look at this, I'm thinking, I don't know, Ukraine, Croatia, something, you know, like an area like this. And this, this guy has been out here doing, doing what he needs to do for an extended amount of time. Right. And, and the right. photographer w stumbled upon him and he was happy to have his photo taken, you know, so that he himself could remember what was going on out there when he, when he finally makes right. it home to his family and is cleaned up and looks like, you know, like a, a, a normal citizen again, you know, versus being out here doing his thing. See, and I don't even know, like making those comments, I don't even know if this was like, he could be a hiker. He could just be a camper out there hanging out. Paolo, tell us, give us a little bit of the story um, uh, of this. And in the chat, let me, let me bring this up. Paolo says, uh, he says he won't ever nuke a tree, right? So he wouldn't take that out of there. Yeah, yeah, subjective, totally. I would nuke that tree though. <laughs> well, so so here's here's a here's a lesson to be learned, right? Is that as we look at this image now, whether Paolo agrees or not, I think the tree is distracting. However, mm -hmm. I don't know that depending on the style of work and what you're doing with the image, I don't know that I would remove it. But mm -hmm. if you get good enough to see that in your images in post and say, man, I wish that tree wasn't there, whether you take it out or not. So just taking half a step to your left would have gotten rid of the triangle in the top left corner and hidden the tree. If you had seen it in camera, problem solved. Mm -hmm. So you, even though you might not want to edit your photos later, you can certainly pre-visualize that with that intent and fix it in camera. And then you've solved all the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yep, there you go. So uh, as for the story of this, he says the story is written above. So if you are a member, head over to the to this post in the community and you can read the story of this shot. And then Phil is piling on in disagreement with me on that tree. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate the support. <laughs> he, says, he says I'm with you, Paolo. Yeah, I get it. I don't know. It's subjective. And I'm a minimalist, so very cool. Thank you for submitting this. Beautiful photo. Beautiful photo. Yeah, it's great. Yep. All right. Moving right along. Now we're to Irvin Penn. Now Irvin Penn says yep. a different path. Yeah. A different path. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Yeah. So this is kind of what you were talking about before, Troy, with your shot, right? Where the composition posed or, or com composed differently. Do you have a, a kind of a balance in here with our tree, our main tree in the foreground, and then the supporting characters leading us further and further down this road in the background versus the the tree? Like in yours, you had the tree in the foreground with the high values um, and the other trees sort of behind it, making the viewer sort of bounce around the scene. This one, I'm taken, I feel like I'm taken right through this, this scene. I'm looking at this first tree and I see the little things kind of on it. I find that interesting. And then I sort of move down back here and then down the road in here. So it, it takes me through this, this whole sort of flow here. What say you? Yeah, I really love this. I, I love the fact that it's it's more of a landscape shot, but yet it's really kind of a portrait of this tree where because the background is softer, right? It's shallower out of fee, out of focus. The tree is really predominant, really stands out. And as you know, if you've listened to us before, you know that I really like depth in my imagery. So I love that. I love that effect um, with that shallow depth of field, the tree being in focus. It really makes me feel like, oh, this is a portrait of this tree and even the composition, you know, where it's slightly off to the right using the thirds and then the branches kind of leaning up in the top of that opening and lower left, um, which draws our eye in and wants us to walk through this. It's, it's really wonderful. Um, and it also feels kind of infrared esque. Um, I'm feeling like mm -hmm. this is an infrared image. Yeah. So. I, I feel that too. I see that. Yeah. For the, for the, the green on the trees is turning white, right? Is that, is that what's happening here? Yeah, the grass and the trees and sort of, yeah, yeah, it definitely mm -hmm. feels infrared. Or is that grass? Is that maybe it's snow? Hmm. Well, you know, but here's, here's the thing is that it's definitely grass because um, the leaves are the same tone. So if this was shot in color and you just converted it to black and white, they would all be dark tones of gray because green goes dark gray, the tree goes dark gray, you know, it would be like bleh. But because it's infrared, it's given some separation and bringing the highlights up in what would be green and creating that separation. That's, yeah. that's my guess. Yeah. A really cool shot though. Yeah, I love that. It just shows the power and just sort of the grandeur of these, these trees yeah. that have, that have seen humans come and go over the years, right? <laughs> and they're still here. Love yep. that. You know what, um, looking in the chat here, Phil, Phil brought up a good comment here. I want to bring it up on screen. Um, this one here. So he says his approach is he either got the shot or he didn't get the shot, right? So he wants to get it, it essentially, this is, this is kind of the, the, the sentiment or the idea that we used to have in the military when we were shooting slide film or whatever. It's like, you know, get it right on the, on the sheet of film right? Make sure your exposure's right. Take an extra millisecond to make sure your composition's right. Get it right on the frame of film. And processing later, in the case of slide film, I mean, you could print it color, but if you're printing this, then you have more latitude to make some more minor adjustments, but still you want to get it right on the main slide because that's what's going in the Kodak slide projector, right? <laughs> you're not going to make any changes to it. That's where that came from. However, if we were shooting black and white or we're shooting color negative film, it was it was very similar today to today with with less capabilities in that you're going to shoot this. But, you know, later that, oh, you know, I'm going to push or I'm going to pull the film because I didn't have the right speed film. So I'm going to finish this this shot in the dark room. I'm going to finish it. So right. I'm curious what you think, Troy, about the sentiment and it, of. of get it right in camera or don't get it. It's kind of, a, it's an offshoot of the same question we were talking about before, right? It's like, 
you know, it, should you should you mess with a shot in the computer? And I stand, I still say, pixels were born to be punished with the asterisk, like Troy says, of, you know, if you're passing it off as this is reality and this was like this when I shot it, then you're being disingenuous. But yeah, I don't I don't subscribe to the get it in the camera or you didn't get it because I, I feel like you're losing out on a lot of beauty that could be shared with the world and you're not using you're not using these wonderful tools that we have to let us pull forward that vision that we had of the scene that we had in our mind's eye so why not i don't know i'm curious i'm curious what you think of phil's <laughs> i'm trying to think like an hour long reply to that in a few <laughs> minutes so compression uh, yeah first and foremost there is no as my eyes saw it because your eyes don't work like a camera. Your brain doesn't work like a camera. It, it's different. So there is really no purity there. Also, every camera, every sensor, even the film was designed by an engineer that decided whatever those photons that hit that plate, how it would be interpreted. So there is no purity, right? There, mm -hmm. is, the, there is the exercise of doing the best you can to get it in camera. Absolutely yeah. agree with that. Like the more data you get in camera, the better. Whether you're shooting digital or you're shooting film, um, there is almost, I mean, I, I would go so far as to say there are no visual artists of any historical note that the images that you see were straight out of camera. Mm -hmm. um, they almost always went through a dark room, went through a printing process where there was dodging and burning and vignetting, final prints, you know, Easton, Weston and Ansel Adams, and the list goes on and on and on. I'm, I know there's exceptions, so we're not getting deep into it. But if if that's how you want to work, that's fantastic. Right. But just realize that no, a lot of the noted famous world famous photographers did not work that way. Yeah. And there's a lot of magic going on inside your camera that's changing what you see through the viewfinder versus how the image comes out. So. I would just caution anybody to to be careful about how you stand on that point because it, it it's not it's not a hundred percent absolute, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's more complicated. I, I'm dancing around some I, points, but I get what you're saying. You know, the other the other part of it to Phil's point is there there's nothing wrong with having this personal dogma of or or, or setting stretch goals for yourself saying, you know what, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to mess with this in Lightroom. You know, I want to see if I can't get it right at the point of capture. That's my personal challenge to myself. Right. But it's, right. you know, that, that personal challenge shouldn't extend out to other photographers and poo poo them. Not that Phil's doing that, but poo poo them for no. post-processing or somehow diminish their work because they choose to, to do and execute a different way you're totally fine to to execute with constraints that you've placed on yourself which is great right we all do that um, but not everyone has to do that not everyone subscribes to that i got to get it right in camera i used to because i had to because i was shooting back in the dark ages right but now <laughs> we, have, we have tools that mean i don't necessarily have to yeah no yeah. fun stuff and this is good. This yeah. shot is great, though. I love it. I love the I love the tonality of it. I love the composition of it. I love that that strong tree in the foreground. I, I, yeah. And the guys, the supporting characters in the background. It's like all those guys should have little faces on them. <laughs> they just talk. They talk to each other. <laughs> all right. I feel like that conversation is going to continue. The get it right. <laughs> conversation is going to continue for a while. All right. Well, next it up. never ends. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's going to go on forever, especially now with this AI stuff, you know, and what is real? You know, is that a real photo? Right. And, you know, all that. Right. Uh, Nora Zanotnis, she submitted Cross Breeze. Cross Breeze. Take a look at that. that. It's full of squares. Yeah. Rectangles. <laughs> it's full of squares. <laughs> okay. I, I really do. And I really do love this. I think that um, my favorite is the window on the left that has the shadow from the window on the right that's inside the square right there's all these squares just like filling each other and i just think it's i just think it's so great um 
I love the black and white. The toning is fantastic. The cropping, the composition. I think that those are all super wonderful. Where I'm really struggling with this image is out the window on the right. We're getting some very dramatic highlight banding, you know, around the dark edges, which to me, I know that that's, you know, probably post-processing and it's pushed too far. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with pushing an image really far, as you already know, but I really prefer not to see the artifacts of it. So I don't just filling in that white line there would be, would be huge. So, you know, in Photoshop, select the closest tone to it, uh, set your layer style or your brush to darken and just brush it in there and it'll bring mm -hmm. that tone right down and match it. It'll be perfect. And then you'll never see it. And then you're done. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah. I was, I was going to ask you that, you know, <laughs> I was going to ask you what is the, what's the quick solution to nuking that out of there? And you do that on a separate layer, right? And you're sampling all layers below. Uh, uh, no, nah, I mean, you don't have to, I mean, if you want to work the most perfect Photoshop way, yeah, create a new mm -hmm. layer, do all that, or just get it done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, my rule is, is if I can do it in five minutes, or 10 minutes, I don't make extra layers and save it. I'll just do it again later. So. Oh, wow. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And we could very easily continue our last conversation on this image. Like <laughs> if, if you go in and fix that around, around these, around this window here, uh, are you in breach? Like Phil, would, would, uh, would Nora be in breach of Phil Lewenthal dogma if she went in and fixed this haloing effect around here or you just gotta, you know, or would that haloing effect even be there? Should she have left that the sky back there bright, you know, because yeah. that's the way yeah. it was shot. I don't know. Good so, question. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah. Love it. I love these. And there's no one right answer, right? That's the, that's the whole thing. It's all, it's all productive discourse about imaging and all that. All right, I'm clicking the show more replies button right here <laughs> just to make sure there's nobody hiding in here. <laughs> I'm checking right. as I go along with you just to make sure. Thank you, thank you. All right, Raphael Swift is, is up next. At a gathering of friends taken with the venerable, or venerable Nikon 50 millimeter F1.4 D. Do you have that lens for um, uh, you? No? No, uh, grain supplied by setting the Nikon to 25,600. Oh yeah, there you go. There's grain. All right, let's bring that up. Yeah, cool. I dig awesome. it. Yeah. yeah, super cool. I, I, now, you know, not, not always being a big fan of cropping people. Um, so the gentleman in the top left corner I, I struggle with that a little bit, right? I, I bet, I, but I'm, I'm seeing this as sort of a photojournalistic expression of the time and, and a storytelling event. And it's really about the gentleman in the front right corner. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm totally good with that. It's, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool image. I, my only comment is on what I would do to improve the image is uh, take down the cooler a lot like burn it way down because it's just kind of competing, I think with the rest of the image. Other than that, um, you took out those little bright highlight dots and all that other stuff you cleaned up. So I think it's great. Yeah, good yeah. conversion too. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, this is cool. This is this is a cool shot. I like the vignette. It makes me feel, it makes me feel a lot like we're, um, I don't know. This is a these these are these cool dudes hanging around a bonfire or something or at the beach, you know, and just chilling. And one guy pulls out his guitar and jams a little bit, and we're just hanging out. That's that sort of relaxed feel that's going on here. I agree with lowering the values uh, of where's my mouse? Here it is. Um, of the whatever this guy is in the middle, because that's that's yeah. not. I don't feel like that's pertinent to the overall image. So lowering that down a little bit. And maybe similarly lowering the values on this, his arm on this side as well to maybe closer match that arm. I know there's a light source illuminating that, but that's, that is drawing our eyes away from the faces of our characters here. So I'd probably darken that just a, just a tad to bring it, not exactly 
in a tonality equilibrium with this this arm mm -hmm. but just a little bit darker over there it would be cool yeah, yeah but i like it i was wondering i was curious what you were going to say about the crop of the the he's the guy playing the guitar in the upper left because i know yeah. you have a thing about amputations <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I just it just it still bugs me. Um but I'm I'm good with it in in this presentation. I mean, I I would struggle with cropping him out or or you know, having him so tight in that corner. I might even go so far as to use AI to try to give him, you know, some headspace and an elbow, <laughs> you know, and be like keep him in the shadows in the background just jam in there, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool shot. All right. That's some good black and whites. And there's the color yeah, version. Right. Yeah. Look at that. I love the fact that a bunch of you guys dropped your colors in here because that's mm -hmm. super neat to see what the conversion. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting. You know, this shot, the the color version of this, I, I, I agree with submitting the black and white one. Obviously, it's a black and white critique, but I do like the black and white one better. Um, this one, I don't. I don't dislike, but it's interesting how this toaster or whatever you call it a toaster, this object in the middle you call here, it a toaster. I thought you called it a toaster. I, it's it's <laughs> interesting how it's not as it's not as distracting in the color version as it is in the black right. and white right there. Right. So interesting. Very cool. All right. Show more replies. All right, go. <laughs> you're good. See, I'm a, I, I can learn. I'm learnable. Next one up is from Thomas. He says a 1932 Duesenberg instrument panel. Oh wow, look that at that! Cool. Oh, that is cool. You know what they're gonna start doing though? They'll probably start simulating these kind of gauge clusters in electric vehicles. So. <laughs> you know, you'll yeah. have a Tesla with, oh, sim simulate this particular gauge cluster in digital. I would love that. That would be mm -hmm. perfect. You yeah, know, they're just things. They're just things that you can look at and see as opposed to actually reading the number. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, anybody who's a motorhead, like we, we all know that we, we rotated our tacks so that when you saw the the needle pointing straight up, you were near red line. Like you didn't have to know what the RPM was. You just know it's straight up. I can't go any further, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love the the physical, you know, tact that's in there. I think that's really wonderful. Um, to this image, I love the conversion. I like the specular highlights. You know, black and white really works well when we have good contrast. I like that a lot. I think where I'm struggling with is maybe this is a shifter down on the lower left that's just kind of there and the right side of the car like i don't know what you would call that like the frame of the car it's brighter than the gauge cluster and i just wish that it was either cropped in tighter or some of that was was burned down yeah what do you think yeah. i i i tend to agree with that um yeah, so our, our subject, our hero of this shot is this cluster, obviously. So everything else is subordinate and should be should be tamped down just a hair to, to illustrate that. Unless it's part of the overall narrative that you're selling with this photo. Like, okay, look at this overall dash and it's super chromey and, you know, all this. But I think the subject of this is this cluster. So, yeah, I would drop that down. And, yeah, this, this shift down here, the shifter. Um, it's probably a little bit distracting for me and uh yeah who is this in the chat eric <laughs> dr pronsky says uh this speedometer says it goes at 240 miles per hour yeah you think this car can hit 240 troy you think uh no i'm, I, I'm thinking i wonder if it's kilometers because notice the temperature gauge says celsius there you go look at you look at you your <laughs> brain is firing today normally my brain is firing what's going <laughs> Oh. Nice. What are you doing? Drinking coffee over there? What's happening? <laughs> oh, I got some chamomile. I'm doing good. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like the shot. I like it. This is really cool. I love the contrasty nature of this. And it's just old timey. The black and white perfectly suits the old time feel of the, the, the subject or the subject matter of the shot. Um, what what is might be a little distracting for me is my brain is having trouble finding my plane of focus in here because our gauges off to the left here are a little bit soft 
and then we get a little bit we're getting soft on the right here so i feel like i guess the plane is right here in the middle but then you go down and our petals are out of focus so my brain even though i, I find the photo pleasing i think my brain is hunting around for where's the plane of focus in in the shot but other than right. that, yeah, it's it's a it's a tight shot. I love it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, and I think well, we have more. Let's see. Do we have more under Phil? Oh yeah, we have more under Phil. Cool. Phil, here's Phil's shot. Look at that. So clean. Look at this shot. Even the border and the it's so it's so the intentionality of having this off-white border which i'm guessing phil you took a tone out of the shot itself to to guide the color of the border i think that works well i like the overall misty feel of it i even like the the this water uh pattern that this is making is almost a figure up here i almost see kind of a ghostly hooded figure up here with its arms stretched out or something but it's kind of a warshak test or something but yeah i know i love it obviously we have a we have a subject and supporting subjects or supporting actors in the shot and even this cliff face on the background adds to it and gives us that sense of depth so we kind of get a feel how how close the photographer was to all this so we have our foreground and midground and our our far background elements with the action happening long exposure and our our rock in the you know in this this the base here kind of that trifecta striping effect here i know you're probably going to say you want to see more contrast in that rock right troy you want to see a little bit brighter <laughs> no. is that no like okay what are you gonna say no. no um first of all i i love the shot phil i i i dig this one i think if i was to title this and i would title it the specter because yeah it, right it feels yeah it feels like a like a ghostly image um my favorite part of this whole image is, you know, the center of the specter and then the mountains in the back left. We'll call them mountains, right? The rocks, whatever. I think that the, the whole lower half of that image, the rocks, I would crop them out and I would leave and you would have to play with this, but I would leave just enough of that rock to let you know that it's a rock. But the rest of it is, you know, the wave, the softness of that water and then that that distant peak back there. I think we don't need all that foreground of the rock. I think it's, I don't think it's telling us any more story than we need. I think it's, it's all about the specter. Mm -hmm. It's a three, right? It's the, the magic, the magic feel of three. We've got the, the sort of background and then our foreground mist and then the rock. So this, like, like you're saying the this, the beach area down at the bottom. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of a, it's a party crasher in our three is a magic number song. Right? <laughs> And I would crop, I would crop out, you know, eight tenths of that rock. I would, I would come down just below that little tiny peak. Yeah, maybe right in there. I would mm. crop it out. Oh, interesting. Test it. See how it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in that case, you, I mean, he's if you're cropping that much of the bottom up, you're you're nearing square, a square crop format right. for this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or at least yeah. at least four three, so or two three, four three, two three, one of them. Yep. Yeah, very cool. I like it. Yes, very All cool. Right. Yep. All right. And coming up next is Craig Stanfley. No caption. He just captioned this black and white. Love this. Look at this. So portraiture. A. I love the 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 technical execution of this one because the the way that he's positioned the the floorboard so that they're all kind of you know the vanishing point is correct or going into the the same direction there our horizon line of that of the 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 border in the background um i forget what that's called in carpentry what is that called the that little uh, this thing right here what are you talking this guy right here this what oh is this? i don't know i that. should know but i'm <laughs> i know I'm you're the you're the master builder in the <laughs> so that is perfect i feel like it's it's perfectly horizontal um let me it's just not. draw out let I'm me draw out a crop it. on this i'm doing it right now oh, it's not it is a little bit not. it's like a pixel <laughs> it's like a pixel off craig stanley it's a little low on the left dude oh it's almost perfect it is <laughs> it is uh so well okay that's easily fixed you can rotate molding thank you jim peters it's molding uh so yeah. this molding on the on here i love that 
I love the stark background here. You know what I really love about this? I love even love the black the black border with just a white little key line. That's perfect for this. It gives it that weight and feels like an art piece that you'd see in a in a modern art museum or something. But I really love the fact that he his choice of lens for this. So he's he's going for the the distortion on this shot, right? He wants to wants to stretch it out long and show that, you know, and it, it doesn't, it's not bad. It's not like, oh my God, her feet are gigantic, right? It works. It works in this shot. I don't know. What do you think? Other than the horizon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Other than the horizon. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I do really like the shot a lot. What the horizon, obviously, but one of the things I'm struggling with is, is I feel like, and I can see that like, it doesn't feel centered. Like I want her to be centered, but I realize like her head might be centered and her foot's not right centered. Her body is like, it's a weird centering, right? Cause of, cause of the body shape. So mm -hmm. I would probably play with that a little bit. Um, and if I was to lean to one or the other, I would lean to space in front of her. So I would, I would play with that a tad. Uh, other than that, th there's only one thing in here that's really driving me nuts. It's uh -oh. just, yeah. Can you guess what it is? Frederick, can you guess what it is? Uh, wait. Uh, yes. I know exactly what it is, Troy Miller. <laughs> I know exactly. You are going to say this disembodied hand on her shoulder, either that one or both of them. This one back here in the back. Something to do with those hands, you're going to say, right? The hands. Yeah. Her left hand wrapping around her back. I don't mind yeah. the hand on the right because it's it's sort of connected to her arm and stuff and the hand that's wrapping around on the left i feel like it's interrupting this really beautiful curve of her back and her waist and it's not just so much that the hand is there it's that it's interrupting this really wonderful line you're talking and about this so, one this one back here right yeah above her waist yeah okay yeah 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 so i would i would definitely make sure you know what i tell my couples when i'm photographing them i says you can't put your hands in the curves like the curves are sexy they look good don't put your hands there right we want to see the curves and so in this sense like her hand is is you know breaking that line of her back and going into her waist and i just wish the hands wasn't there the fingers the fingers rather yeah yeah that's interesting i'm curious you know if folks in the chat or in the comments in the community sign sound off and tell tell me what you think because I, I i hear what you're saying and i knew you were going to say that Troy. that doesn't bother me that much i don't know why I, I hear i think maybe i need to see it without that hand in there but i feel like if that hand wasn't in there it, i feel like it'd be disembodied like that that arm the arm on this side kind of going into her would be like, okay, where's that hand? Where is it going? Is it, you know, where, <laughs> did it, did it bend or something? You know? So yeah. So having that in there like completes the, the, the connection of she actually has a fully working arm here without that there, I'd, I'd lose it. I don't know, but maybe it could be positioned a different way or something, but I do, I like the whole S curve of her all the way down. So I'm not sure how you would do that. And no, she he posed her this way to obscure her breast a little, so that we're you know we're not getting the the whole illegal for Facebook or social <laughs> look of the shot because you know God forbid darkened pixels. Um, but I don't know, I don't know. It's up for debate. I mean, all, all of this is completely subjective, right? So I'd be curious to hear what the what the group think is on this hand and having that in there or either removing it or posing her differently so that it's so it's not there i don't know yep so good. yeah good sh good job craig yeah paolo doesn't agree with you paolo's just disagreeable today paolo says uh, <laughs> the girl's pose is perfect <laughs> yeah yep yeah. subjectivity but yeah it's a it's a great shot i like it I like, and I do like the, what do you think about the light, the wide angle, the choice of the wide angle lens? Oh, that's this? great. No, I mean, I, I love wide angle. I think that it's, it breaks a barrier, um, when you're photographing people and gives you a slightly different perspective and it shows an intent not to be lazy in mm -hmm. what you're doing. It shows, I think it shows an intent, um, to create something specific as opposed to, oh, I'm just going to sit back here on the couch with my 85 or whatever. And you know, I, I that kind of, that kind of scenario. So. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, right? Because we, it's not, not that Craig's a learning photographer. Craig is a, an accomplished photographer. Uh, let me take Phil off there. Um, but just the, 
the idea of getting getting yourself to a point where I mean, having the gear notwithstanding, right? Because a lot of photographers just like, all I have is a 50 mil lens and I'm going to do what I can with what I, what I have, which I've seen photographers create magic with next to nothing when it comes to gear, both on the post-processing side and the capture side. But when you get to a certain level where you understand what you're trying to get and you know what your gear is going to create, you can start right. getting playing outside the lines like with what Stanley's doing here with wide angle lens and fashion and you know showing motion. He's got motion in here. He's got a wide angle. He chose black and white for reasons. He chose symmetry, you know, for for reasons in the shot. So yeah, I, I love the I love intentionality in shots like this where because it because it screams professional. Yeah. It screams like I knew what I was doing. I was executing on an idea I had, and here are the results, right? So right, and it, funny enough is um, you know shooting weddings and stuff. I would have clients come over, look at our wedding albums, look at our portraits, and say like, you know, we love everything you're doing, but like we're not, really not into the fisheye, right? Because I shoot a lot with the fisheye. And I'm like, okay, that's great. And then I shoot whatever I want because I'm going to shoot with fisheye. And lo and behold, they will buy them. They will love yeah. them when it's done correctly. So sometimes, you know, you have to go beyond what you think your viewers might appreciate and create mm -hmm. that and then let them decide if they like it or not. But don't get stuck in the traditional lens selection, depth of field selections, lighting, you know, take all yeah. that into consideration. Yeah, yeah definitely break, break the rules. Portraits must be shot with an 85 millimeter or a 105 millimeter at 2.8 or, you know, you must have a blurry background. Your subject must be <laughs> posed at three quarters with their head slightly tilted uh, and, and on and on and on. Inside right? yeah. of the hands, the backside of the hands, not the inside if you're PPA. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to All do it. Things. I've never learned how to do it properly. <laughs> you can shoot it. You just can't do it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that's the joy of all this stuff. It's interesting. Um, all right, so One moving more, right along. Oh, we're past the hour already. These things go so fast. I thought this was going to go quick because there weren't a ton of submissions. We're already past the hour. No, all you right. got off on the whole AI thing again. That was your fault, you know, <laughs> on that AI tangent. No, you know whose fault it was? It was Phil Lewenthal's fault. He's always talking about how much he loves AI. I can't stand it. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm, I'm kidding, Phil. I'm kidding. All right, Eric Pronsky's up next. Uh, let's see. Uh, he deliberately made the guard tower in the background. Let's bring this up. The guard tower in the background more prominent as it adds to the story of the brutality there. I R. Okay. Let me read this. Uh, da Chow, Doc Chow, this dreadful slogan, work leads to freedom, is what prisoners, mostly Jewish, saw upon entering Nazi concentration camps. Most were sent to the gas chamber as soon as they passed through these gates. I was deliberately made, I deliberately made the guard tower in the background prominent as it adds to the story of the brutality there. It's got this infrared with a 700, at, 720 nanometer converted camera, which you understand, Troy, because you are a infrared photographer. Look at that. Look at that. That is, yeah. wow, that's powerful. That it is. is it's, powerful. Really, it's, it, it's really powerful. And it, you know what? Not even knowing what those words meant, um, the image itself is incredibly well executed. I just want to stress that. I mean, you know, the composition, the the choice of depth of field. I mean, when I looked at this, I really felt like, oh, Eric did this on purpose, right? Like the background has the right amount of highlight and contrast. It's not overexposed, all the technical aspects. And I think I think what's important is, is that the technical aspects matter, even in a shot like this, that somebody might know what that means, because if that background was all blown out, it, it would be it would be hard to look at for a long time, right? Like it would over overpower our eyes. So incredibly well done the only thing that i can add is that it's slightly heavy on the right not on the left so i would center it a little bit and i'm i might bring the i don't know about the top i'm not sure i might bring that down to where the the first block the black is mm -hmm. but definitely get it centered i mean this thing is is crying to be perfect but mm -hmm. well done yeah no i agree this is this is a beautiful shot and what a what a striking and important shot as well you know and it's it's interesting i mean not interesting it's great that eric took the time to just sort of tell this story 
and and grab the shot and the the fact that the background is 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 gorgeously out of focus and we've got our text which you know where our brain forces force us to kind of make sense out of in the foreground and the whole thing's in silhouette and the story behind it i think the caption helps make this story or makes this make the shot because it adds that much more importance and weight to it um what mm -hmm. it all means right and then the um just the fact that this this horrible thing is etched in um wrought iron <laughs> right the permanence right. and and the just the the full permanence of wrought iron and who must have been looking at the sign you know, like how many people looked at this sign and what are their stories it's just it's crazy what a what a good yeah what a good use of and, photography and i had to look it up i mean I, I i mean i didn't immediately know what it was so you know i had to look it up and then of course once you know what that saying is and what the relationship is it really changes the relevance to the image and and looking at you know the the iron work like that was one of the mm -hmm. things that I noticed once once I looked it up and read what it was, then I went back and I looked at the image again and I'm like, well, somebody put a lot of time into making that ironwork beautiful. That's right. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. so I, I appreciate Eric. I appreciate your attention to that detail. Um, you know, the vertical and diagonal sharpness, uh, your your intent on you know, the background, making sure that it stood out. I mean, those are those are the things that as photographers that we want to be able to do, especially when it matters. And so yeah. all the things that you've learned came to fruition right there. You were like, OK, this is what I need to do to tell this story. So, you know, double kudos for that. Double kudos. Yeah. Very double well kudos. Yeah. That's using your superpowers for good, man. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Work leads to freedom. It's crazy. All right, and who's up next? Oh, Mr. Jim Peters. I think Jim is, I'll reload, but I think Jim, you are our last of this critique. Lake, uh, Lake Mono Tufa. Tufa? Yeah, Lake Mo is that Mono Tufa? Lake? Yep. Cool, I still Got need it. to get to this. I feel like this is like two hours from me, two or two and a half, three hours from me, and I still yeah, haven't been here in person. Is it more, more than that? Yeah, maybe a little more. Oh, I think you yeah. can see the flies in the water. Yep. Is that flies? Are the flies there that? Oh, down here? Uh, yeah, the brine flies. Yeah, uh, they're pretty cool. I don't know if those are the flies or not, but they're though there. They're really cool. I, I, um, I, I don't think I've ever had anybody use the word brine fly and <laughs> pretty cool in a sentence before <laughs> Troy Miller. <laughs> they are. Look, I'll, I'll tell you real quickly. Like, if you're ever there and you see the brine flies, like, don't run away from them. Actually walk up to them because they just part for you. They don't want anything to do uh -huh. with you. They just move. They won't land on you. They don't fly on you. They don't do anything. It's the gnats later. We won't get into that. Anyway, so. Um, you got you got to exert about. some dominance when you first arrive there so they know who's boss, right? Or else you're just going to be, you know, taken advantage of for your time at the lake. <laughs> I've laid down on the shore and they're it's black with brine flies. They just move. They don't even care. Really? Um, maybe it's your cologne. So, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I'm a natural insect repellent. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. All right. What do you think of this? Uh, it's great. And for, first, Jim, good job for going there. It's like him and I were chatting at like some, the last possible moment. And I'm like, oh, dude, you're right there. You have to go there. So uh, good job for him getting there and, and getting these shots. Um, I love I loved the shot. I love the area so much. I love the curve of this. You know, I'm pretty sure I know right where this is at. In, in images like this, and I know this is a challenge in the, in the Mono Lake Basin in this area, is that everything is so beautiful and you want to just take it all in. But there, there's, it doesn't have any separation. And that's always really hard where you know, your tufa is equally as sharp as the mountains in the background. And it looks like you shot it with a longer lens. So you get that compression. And, you know, that we don't have any separation. So, you know, what I what I would suggest is, is through dodging and burning, bring the mountains down, bring the tufa up, maybe even defocus the mountains a tiny bit, you know, play play with it. It just can be subtle. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, but creating creating some separation in there and i don't think you need a bit of that foreground right up to that first little curve of the sand that you have there i would take i would probably take that out like leave right the here, curve right about but, here like, 
like uh, just below yeah. the curve? Yeah, just below the curve. So the curve is still in there because that's a really wonderful element. Um, well, I think maybe he's maybe he was trying to keep the 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 detail of the cloud reflection in the foreground down there for that symmetry maybe but it's not a it's not a major subject though now yeah. you know that's just and, and this is one of those images where and when you're standing there there is so many things that get your attention there are so many elements that you want to that you want to try to focus on that it's really hard to isolate so you know, beautiful image, but I think that we have we have sort of a separation issue between the tufas and the mountains and the distance that's back there. Yeah, I love it. What a cool shot, though. I need to get there. I need to get. Oh there. yeah, let's yeah, let's do it. See you there next week, next Monday. Well, you know, you you know. Are you going there next? <laughs> when are you going? Are you going seriously? I don't know. I don't know, but we could go. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I'm I'm about to pull a trigger on a certain vehicle, so maybe that vehicle yeah. will be the one to take us up there. Yeah, um, yeah. My my only comment on that, I agree, Troy. I agree with everything you said. Obviously, you you have more knowledge of this place. You've been there. You know what's possible, what's not possible. I remember seeing a shot uh, of this area from uh, one of our members. Uh, member Stephen Sharf posted a shot of this area. Oh, yeah. It was more more of this structure. What is this, by the way, in there? What is that made of? Is that salt? Like, what is that in the middle of the lake here? It, it, or it's, on the um, edge of the lake? It, they're mineral deposits from water percolating up from the bottom. And they're only formed underwater. So oh. that, yeah, that was formed underwater. And it just pushes up over time? Yeah, as the as the gas, you know, permit comes through the ground, <clears throat> it leaves little deposits on the, the opening and it creates the tufa. Okay. Okay. Got it. God, it must smell wonderful over there then. <laughs> it does not smell bad. No, it's nice. <laughs> it doesn't? I mean you got gas perking up per percolating up and you got nope. brine flies all over the place. It's and it doesn't smell like it feels nope. like that would smell horrible. No, nope, not there. I'll take you someplace over there that smells, though. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll pass. I'll pass on that. Yeah, no, I like this shot. Yeah, the only other thing I was going to say was, like, the, the subject, which is difficult in these kind of shots. We've talked about this before, where you're, you have this, this, the grandeur of this scene that you're trying to capture. And it's almost impossible to capture what your eye and what you're feeling at the moment through a two-dimensional lens like this uh, currently. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's capturing it is one thing and capturing the grandeur of an overall scene, which is one photo. Uh, and then, like I was saying with Stephen, this shot that Stephen Scharf did, he isolated and kind of, uh, made the tufa the subject of the shot and everything else kind of fell off. You know, I think it was, you know, used depth of field to blur the background and all that. So you had this kind of weird rock structure that was reflecting, you can see the reflection of the of the mineral deposit structure here. I think his shot was more kind of like that symmetrical showing it with the rest of it kind of blurred out. But I see so many shots in here. I mean, not, not in this particular photograph, but I, this area, it feels like a wonderland. Like you just go there and come away with all kinds of abstracts and landscapes and all the good things. Yep. So. Yep. Really cool. Yep. All right, Mr. Peters, thank you. And he is in the chat too. Jim Jim says in the chat, he says, uh, I have both versions with cloud reflections and without. I have the two as separate objects in Lightroom to attempt to add separation, just not enough. Yeah, perfect, yeah. So yeah, he's got all the raw materials to play around with. Very cool. All right. Uh, let me just reload and make sure I didn't miss any last minute yeah. stragglers. <laughs> That's what I was doing, yeah. Oh, uh, you don't see any in there? Okay, let's go down, show more comments. Uh, there's Craig's. Yep, that was it. All right, Troy Miller, do you have a favorite? Drum roll, please. What is your favorite? This is definitely the hardest one to choose. Um, so many exceptional images. Um, yeah. my, my personal favorite, for no other, no other reason other than it's just my personal favorite, is Deborah's. I really just, I just love that, that shot on the subway. I just, I love that shot so much. I just, I like that one. Probably too. Yeah, because there's... it's, it, it's, it's, it's what I shoot, right? It's not, I don't do photojournalism 
and street, but I, I do people and I figure out people and, and th this to me is just so emotive and yeah. timeless. So yeah. Yeah. It pulls you so in. How many right? other it contenders makes... too? Yeah, no, there, I mean, yes. Yeah. There's at least four or five <laughs> that I, <I'm> thinking <laughs> of. but, uh, yeah, this one, I, I agree with you. Yeah. So this, this Deborah, you will be our favorite of this critique. So thank you for sharing this. I also like Craig Stanfleys cause I like that simplicity of it. And Paolo's is, is amazing as well. So yeah, there's just, there's a lot of, a lot of things to choose from in this critique. So yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. what's our, what's our critique topic? So very, we already kind of foreshadowed it a little bit, but give us the official announcement of next, the next critique topic, which by the way, will be as I pull up my calendar. Oh yeah. Uh, 17th, July 17th will be that critique. So yeah. what will it be, Troy? Tell us. Uh, AI generated imagery. That's it. <laughs> you can use Midjourney. Um, Frederick has a Discord set up. Uh, mm -hmm. Frederick, you can you should share that. <clears throat> but use use Midjourney, uh, generate an image. I think that um, if you're not super excited about it, I'm going to suggest that you lean into it just for the visual inspiration and the challenge of trying to verbalize uh what you want you know to pre-visualize that and verbalize that it's 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 really not that easy it's a lot yeah. harder than it looks yeah you know so yep. and it'll be fun it'll be fun to it'll be fun to see you know what we get yeah and you don't have to love it right you don't have to love the technique but we're gonna help we're gonna help force you to eat your vegetables so that you can start understanding this yeah <laughs> you know going and forward and you don't need any special equipment. You don't these none of this stuff renders on your computer. This stuff all renders on Discord. So you could literally do it on your phone. Um yep. or from a web browser. Like it's it's super, super, super easy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Generating them is is easy, like Troy was saying, but constructing the prompts. Yeah, you will you will likely get if you haven't tried this before, you will likely get sucked into a rabbit hole of possibility. Cause you will <laughs> you will go in there. Once you once you learn how to do it, which I will teach you, like I said at the beginning, I will do a little tutorial on how to get into the Discord. I'll put the link to invite you in there and you'll be set to go. But once you start and you're you're writing that prompt out, you'll start with something simple like, you know, couple on the beach, enjoying a glass of wine, watching the sunset over the Pacific. Boom. And you'll see yeah. what you get from that shot. And from there, you're going to go, oh, but what if I did this? Like, what if, there's this? <laughs> what if there were people in the background playing volleyball? Let me put that in there. And then you'll get you'll get results that may not be what you were looking for. They may look OK, but you you probably won't get what you're looking for, which will force you to refine your prompt to make it even more succinct about what you're asking for. And then from that point, you will probably start exploring the different commands that the that mid journey has to more focus what you're looking for. Like, for example, there are aspect ratio commands in there, which is very simply when you type out what you want, you just go dash dash AR for aspect ratio and then your aspect ratio, whether it's three two, sixteen nine, 16, nine or whatever. And then the output that you get will be in 16, nine. You could say cinematic and it'll do widescreen and give you sort of a cinematic look to it. So, yeah, I just want you to just put your little put your big toe in the water just to see what the stuff is doing. And then you can not touch it again if you don't want to. But you'll see what it's doing. And then we can discuss on uh, the next critique or perhaps Friday. But uh, the, there will be a video in the critique for this for this upcoming event. I forget. I don't know. We'll name it maybe artificial intelligence images or something. Um, and there may be a prize that I will associate with this one for the winning entry, the winning and the second winning entry. And I will let you know what those are when I post the uh, the critique topic. So, and one last housekeep housekeeping thing for the members, the TWIP Pro members, let me bring up this community again. Uh, so I'm making a couple of changes to just how all this stuff is laid out over in the left column over here. So right now our member events are where we're posting our critiques. That's going to stay right there. But what's going to go away is photo critiques will go away and member events will be renamed to photo critiques. So just to make it easier to find. So 
When you want to find photo critiques, just go into photo critiques. Uh, but then there'll be another new category that is specifically for actual member events, live streams, webinars, trainings, in-person events, and all that. We kind of co-opted the actual member events area for photo critiques, so I'm basically formalizing it and making it easier to find, making things easier to find. So, yeah, this one should be interesting, Troy. I'm, I'm curious to see what folks will come up with because it's it doesn't have to be a fully... Or you tell me, this is your critique, right? So, or your critique topic. <laughs> Does it have to be a fully AI generated image or can it be one of your own images that you then took into the beta of Photoshop and made changes to or what? Or does it matter? I, it, it doesn't really matter, right? We're not, this is not photography we're judging, but I think that it's it's encouraging everybody to play with AI. So if you yeah. if you generated it and you manipulated it and you built something brand new, that's that's, that's great. That's what we're trying to encourage is mm -hmm. um, to try something new. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I want to do a test where, not a test, but maybe a challenge in the community where it is, um, where the challenge is to take what either, either one of your favorite photographs or a photograph that you find interesting, maybe a historically important photograph or something take that photograph and try to recreate it in AI through a prompt by describing the source image and see how hard it is <laughs> to, to get to something. Yeah. And this is an example of like the, the, the gap between quote real photography and what AI can do. So, and it may, you may create something that's really interesting on the other side and you may not be able to get anywhere close to that original image, but the process of trying to get right. there should be really interesting, the journey not the destination. The journey. Yep. Yep. The journey. All right. Cool. Speaking speaking of journey, we're going to end this one, but I can I geek out for one second before we before we end the stream? I yes. Geek out. So, I'm about to start doing a lot more live streams and Twip is probably going to be live streamed in in the very near future, the podcast itself. So, I've been working on a couple of assets to build up the live streaming imagery that I have. I want to show you my, can I show you my be right back screen? So when I have to step away and, I have to, and then I come back. I'm scared now. Now I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you a couple of them. All right, so here's one of them. <laughs> so that's, that's be right back right there. Of course, I'm a Star Trek nerd, so I had to do it, right? <laughs> so that's one of them. Here's another one I made. Look at How about that? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for being my model for this dance routine, Troy Miller. I appreciate it. You did a really yeah, good job. Yeah. <laughs> you did a great job there. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah. But yeah, those are those are just things I'm, that I play with in my spare time. You know, getting ready for this this live stream version of this week in photo. All right, we'll leave it right there, folks. Remember, the next critique is going to be AI-generated imagery. All the details will be in the photo critiques event area, which will, by the time you get ready to submit your images, it'll be ready. Um, I'll probably get that built and pushed out today. Um, tomorrow is a holiday here in the US, so I probably won't be doing much. But we'll get that pushed out. And let's start a dialogue inside the community. If folks have any questions on how to do things or you're stuck on something, there's a couple of members inside the community that have been playing with this stuff a lot that can probably answer your questions. Myself, Troy Miller, of course, uh, Renee Robin has been poking around in there. Um, and there's a couple of other people that have dipped their toes into understanding how all this works. Tim, Tim Ingalls, one of them. So let's just get a little dialogue started within the community that will likely, maybe when I do the, the, the area for photo critiques and the new member area for events, I will likely create a specific area for AI so that we can start throwing any AI related news or chat or images or whatever in a, in a specific place. And they won't go into our sort of normal photography sharing area just to keep it split. But 
Cool. All right. We'll leave it right there. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Um, if you're watching this, please remember to like and subscribe to the TWIP YouTube channel. It helps feed the algorithm, get more eyeballs on the stuff that we're doing. Lots of changes happening in TWIPville um, that you'll see over the coming weeks. Good, very good changes as I sort of iterate this thing into its, into its next form of being, but all part of the game. Troy, any, any final thoughts you want to throw out there before we end the stream? No, I think we're good. We, we've said everything. We've used a lot of words in this one. So only the best words. I got the best words. <laughs> <laughs> I only I only choose the best words to use. They're all and they're in the right sequences, too. All right, cool. All right, let's leave it right there. Everybody go have a good week. Thanks for hanging out with us for an extra 36 minutes. I try to keep these things to an hour, but you know, you get Troy talking, you can't shut him up. So <laughs> All right, folks, we'll leave it right there. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you inside of the community and at the next critique on the 17th. See you. Yep. See you guys.